All right, guys. So we've been having the conversation about how um, Congress is now very interested in banning TikTok. That's on the menu. You got a lot of big money interests lobbying for that to be the case. And um, we got into the specifics as to why that is. I mean, literally the most important part of that is Israel. It's all being framed as like, oh, China's stealing your data, and that's why we got to stop them, because we don't want China stealing your data, bro. Everybody already has stolen our data. I mean, Congress literally passed a law, and Trump signed a law that had like a 6 or 9% approval rating or something like that that made it so any company can sell your data to a third party and they don't need your permission. We have the American government is spying on us relentlessly. If China wanted to get our data, they could have already had it 17 different ways. Okay? So this has nothing to do with China. The real reason they wanted to crack down on TikTok is because it became a hotbed for pro-Palestine activism. And you had the ADL, Jonathan Greenblatt, and the Israel lobby. They did not like that. And they were very open about it. He talked about it on MSNBC. Like, we have a TikTok problem. We need to do something about it. And so, boom, you had the resurrection of the banning TikTok bill. Okay. Well, now... We have another softer, perhaps equally insidious version of this. Look at this. Instagram update limiting political content sparks outrage among pro-Palestinian activists. The default setting for an update to the app limits content likely to mention governments, elections, or social topics that affect a large group of people. An Instagram update automatically limiting the amount of political content that shows up in users' feeds has sparked a wave of discontent from social media users and activists, including pro-Palestine activists who accuse the platform of censorship. A setting for political content was added to the app, which is owned by Meta, apparently without notifying users of the change. That is really fucking nefarious right there. The setting is toggled to limit by default, though users can manually change this to don't limit. The change affects posts likely to mention government selections or social topics that affect a large group of people and or society at large, according to a guidance note. It will also affect suggestions in Explore, Reels, Feed Recommendations, and Suggested Users, as well as Instagram's sister app, Threads, it added. So, in other words, Threads and Instagram are kind of nuking political content with their maneuver here. Users accusing Instagram of active censorship took to X, formerly Twitter, to express outrage, with many surprised after noticing the newly imposed limitations on their feed. One user stated, They want us to post and engage with images of mountains, holidays, beautiful portraits, flowers, and all. They think we have too much of Palestine, Congo, migrant sovereignty, indigenous movement, environmental justice, and racism-related content going around. Many activist movements use social media platforms, including Instagram, for disseminating information, organizing protests, and other forms of mobilization. Since the start of Israel's assault on the Gaza Strip following the Hamas-led attack on October 7th, social media posts by Palestinian journalists and citizens on the ground have become a key source have become key sources of information as the Israeli government has banned international media from entering the Strip. Palestinians also use social media to call for help or get news about their loved ones amid frequent Israeli-imposed telecommunication blockouts on the besieged territory. In December, Human Rights Watch said in a report that Meta, which runs Instagram and Facebook, is systematically censoring content about Palestine on their social networks. So, here's the thing, man. This, this is done on purpose. And this is why you're seeing this new wave of censorship. This is why you saw the revival of the bill to ban TikTok. This is why you see Instagram and threads making this move. It is directly related to pro-Palestinian content. The narrative cannot be suppressed any longer, so they had to come up with new ways to try to suppress it. To try to suppress the truth and try to stick to the script and go with their narrative. And, um... Like I said, this is very subtle and very insidious. So they default change the settings to limit political stuff, and you have to click out of it. Well, guess what? I'm sure they did the math. I'm sure they crunched the numbers. I'm sure they ran their calculations, and what they found out is that probably only 50% of people, I'm just making a number up there, but some percentage of the people will recognize, oh, this limited the political content. Let me find if I can click it back into existence. And some large chunk of people are just not even going to realize that's the case. So the end result here is you've effectively perhaps cut in half or more the spread of this sort of crucial information. It's all on purpose. It's all on purpose. Look, this should terrify all of you, man. It really should. And as somebody who has a political channel, of course, this scares the shit out of me too because we've gone through portions of YouTube going absolutely insane, right? We've gone through stretches like that. Remember the first ad apocalypse? That was terrifying. There's also been times YouTube has tweaked the algorithm and made it so, you know, shows like this really don't get that much play. 
despite having a decent uh, number of subscribers and a decent number of views, there's been times where people who are subscribed to the show can't see the things in their feed for whatever reason. Um, you know, I think that it all comes down to they want to make sure, oh, we don't want to scare away the advertisers. We don't want to scare away the big brand names because they don't want to think, oh, I'm running my ads on controversial stuff. I think ultimately at the end of the day, it comes down to dollars and cents. It comes down to money. And they're trying to make as much money as possible. And if that means, hey, we're going to have to sacrifice political content, they will immediately sacrifice pol political content. But there's a colossal loss in that scenario. And in this instance, the loss is people not getting nearly as much information and facts about what's happening to Palestinians at a time which is a historic moment. I mean, this is going to be remembered in the history books. We are alive during a, an absolute atrocity. And uh, to really bury your head in the sand. And it goes to show you, man, all this concern about all oh, the misinformation and the disinformation. Stop and think about it. In a world that made sense, right? If the social media companies existed back during the days of Nazi Germany, wouldn't you think, hey, if they're going to censor anybody, it should probably be the Nazis and the Nazi supporters, right? Not the victims. In this instance, they're like, We'll, we'll allow the Israel stuff to flourish, but we got to crack down on the Palestinian stuff. To be fair, in, the, in this case, it's a little different. In this Instagram update, they just want to limit like all the political content. But like, we see this, um, we see this all over mainstream media, right? The Israeli perspective flourishes, but then the Palestinian perspective in Western outlets is like barely mentioned, barely allowed in the room. So, but to the extent that you're going to do any sort of censorship, I'm not in favor of censorship, but to the extent that you're going to do it, you would think that it's like, well, we definitely should censor the extremists, not the victims. But in this instance, it's like the victims having a voice that's leading to let's censor. That's crazy to me. That's crazy to me. But that's where we are. It's like we always say, if social media existed back during the lead up to the Iraq war and during the Iraq war, the people they would have censored would have been the ones saying, hey, this is bullshit. Saddam Hussein did not work with Osama bin Laden. Saddam Hussein did not do 9-11. Saddam Hussein doesn't have weapons of mass destruction. They would have been censoring those people, saying that's misinformation, when in reality, the misinformation was coming from George W. Bush and Dick Cheney and the U.S. government. It was lie on top of lie on top of lie, and that was the accepted narrative, the mainstream narrative. And it, it, this feels very similar, right? Let's nuke all of the political content on Instagram, hide all the political content. And the genesis of that is we don't want people seeing this Palestine stuff. And again, probably the core of it is they're afraid advertisers will flee if we allow this stuff to flourish. And so they're like, well, let's appease the advertisers and just ban all these, or let's try to suppress all of this stuff. It's really disgusting. So now you have to try extra hard to search for good information. Like, they're making it hard for you to stay educated and up-to-date on what's happening with our money and in our name if you live in the United States. So, shame on them, man. Shame on them. And geez, I got my fingers crossed just hoping that uh, we don't go down this path and make it even worse on YouTube because that's the last thing we need is further suppression of content like ours. Hey, y'all, do me a favor and like and subscribe. It helps out big time in the algorithm. Click the bell as well for notifications when videos drop, and watch that video on screen right now. You know you want to.